Hello, and welcome to episode 66 of my Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. I am currently doing a post-commentary rather than a live commentary as a way of dealing with the, uh, the issues be between Fraps and uh, Kerbal Space Program. So, anyway, what we're currently looking at is uh, a, an idea I had. Now, as you guys probably have known, I've been fixated for the last, like, month or two, or possibly even three, and pretty much all summer, on the idea of going to EVE and coming back. But I have not been able to get a lander to land and come back from EVE. So, what I have here is an interesting idea that I had, is uh, abusing the uh, game's aerodynamics system. And, uh, I just realized I'm not getting any sound here. Anyway, to abuse the aerodynamic system of the game and try to get a glider that could, uh, maybe push itself up into orbit. Now, uh, the end result, or my first attempt was, uh, what we're currently looking at here. A, uh, nice glider that is, uh, it gets its initial uh, push from a couple of electric motors, which I thought was brilliant. And uh, I kind of flap it around, uh, as we can see, to uh, uh, gain speed. Yes, when I point the nose up and down uh, repeatedly, it... Uh, uh, enables it to acquire some speed. Yeah, this movement here allows it to go faster. And I wanted to see how fast I could get it, and it seemed to get to about 50 meters per second, which just was not enough. So my next attempt at this uh, thing was the exact same thing, just more wings, more surfaces. Um, now I've sped up this video here to make it go a little bit faster. And this did seem, this vehicle did seem to get a bit faster than, uh, the previous attempt. But, uh, not by much. And, uh, you probably can't really tell with the, uh, the video fast forwarding like this, but, uh, it was a pain in the rear to control constantly having to adjust it. Now, here we go, same similar design. Uh, although I made it shorter, put more SAS units on it in the hopes that that would make it easier to control and to put some more control surfaces on it. And uh, I believe I've managed to get this one up to like a hundred meters per second or something. So it was significantly faster. Oh uh, yeah, currently 130 meters per second, but still, well, much is uh, much more difficult to control, and still nowhere uh, near the orbital velocities that we needed, which kind of sucked. I tried doing some barrel rolls, tried doing all sorts of things to try to get the thing to go faster, but uh, it just was not having it. 130 meters per second seems to be about the fastest I could get the thing to go. And, uh, well, as you can see, I tried for quite some time to get the thing to go faster, trying to see how high I could get it, and... But, uh, I just could not get it in the end. So, I had, uh, another idea. What if instead of a horizontal takeoff, like the current one on screen, what if we did more of a vertical takeoff, like this one? And that seemed to work out quite well. Um, went up at a decent speed with this small version. But uh, still nowhere near orbital velocity. So I believe I did a couple more attempts adding more control surfaces on and SAS units in hopes of uh, getting it to go faster. And it did in fact go faster as you can see there. It's 
This one's currently going uh, 2.1 meters per second, it looks like. And, uh, oh yeah, the thing glides on forever. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> and then this was another idea I had. What if I, instead of uh, using control surfaces, I put wings on there? And uh, spun it around like that, but... Uh, well, since uh, wings had a bit more lift to them, sounded like a good idea, but as you can see, it's just not working. In fact, a lot of the wings kind of fell off for no apparent reason. So, tried it with just shit ton more control surfaces. Oh, no, wait, uh, this was... I had another idea that I had. What if I used the system to launch a rocket? Or, yes, so I would have all these control surfaces attached to a rocket, get the rocket up to a uh, altitude, a much higher altitude, where it might uh, be able to push itself up into orbit with uh, a lot less fuel and effort. So I just, since uh, that last one didn't work, I added more control surfaces. Same basic idea here. But uh, as you can see, don't have enough control surfaces yet. Thing just kind of tilts over. So I do what any sane person would do. I put on a solid rocket booster. That certainly did get it up. But as we'll see, it doesn't uh, quite get it to stay up or. It gave it that initial boost to get it off the ground, but the thing was not able to handle it from there. It, as you can see, we get a bit of a wobble here. Although that wobble didn't actually turn out to be too much of an issue, just more of an annoyance. Thankfully, it didn't break. Not that it really mattered, because without that rocket booster, we're just not getting enough force off those uh, control surfaces to keep going. The thing will stabilize once it gets down to a lower speed. There it goes. And this one isn't fast forwarded as you can see. Which is probably a mistake on my part, but meh, whatever. I'm just gonna leave it like this. <laughs> as you can see, it's it's stabilized a bit. But uh, those control surfaces are not uh, sustaining the momentum. And I forgot to turn on the rocket engine, so it kind of falls out. It takes me a few seconds to figure out why. Or maybe I just kind of gave up. Yeah, I just kind of gave up. Okay, and here we go. We have uh, even more control surfaces. No uh, solid rocket booster. And this one is actually able to get up off the ground just from the number of control surfaces it has, but quickly becomes very unstable and kind of starts disintegrating. Which, uh, not good. <laughs> and then we have this little bit here that just kind of goes flying off into the distance. I thought that was kind of funny. So I, I believe I tried to tab over to it or switch over to it. Kind of reminds me of Peter Pan. You know, in the cartoon he kind of flies around in circles like that. And then crashes into the ground and explodes in a million pieces. It's an awesome cartoon. Well, no it's not, but... Meh, whatever. I'm, I'm gonna move on. Little then, I thought, a uh, bigger rocket. 
Yeah. With uh, the control surfaces at the top instead of around it. As you can see, first one, not enough to even get it to spin. The next one, it spins, but not enough control surfaces to uh, get it up off the ground. I was thinking with the bigger diameters I could stick more control surfaces on per, I guess, uh, tier. So we add more control surfaces. It stretches out the stack quite nicely, but still not quite enough to get that rocket up off the ground. Although it does actually seem to be kind of dancing around a little bit. And, uh, even more control surfaces. Now it is able to get up off the ground. And is slowly climbing up. Now, let me just check real quick. I believe this one is currently at, uh... I can't really check without pausing my thing here, I don't think. Oh, maybe... All right, now that last one was just four times. Okay, and this one is normal. This is kind of how things look to me without uh, it sped up. Very laggy, very slow. And this one is just really wobbly, and I believe it like broke or something. Yes, I, I believe I added more control surfaces to this one than the last one, which, you know, would make sense. And then I see that the energy charge there is, like, really going down. So I abort and uh, add more power to it. Because if the thing is not able to power its ascent, then there's not really a whole lot of point to it. So again, after the modifications, I make sure that it has enough power while it's spinning. I can see already that it clearly does not, so abort. Add more RTGs, I believe they are called. Or maybe it's RGT, I don't know. So, uh, let's see, is this the one with sufficient power? It seems to me like I tried it a few times with different uh, levels of power to try to get something that would work. No, it doesn't look like this one is working. Maybe it's the next one that works. Okay, yep. And I believe this one... Yeah, this one is 16 times normal uh, acceleration. Or 16 times uh, faster than what I was seeing it as. Yeah, I'm like getting no sound here at all. That's not a good sign. Anyway. Hopefully you guys will have sound. So, uh, yep. This, this took forever. I think I was sitting here holding the button down going upward for like 45 minutes. Which, uh, to you guys won't be that long, because, let's see, you guys are only experiencing, like, a few minutes of it, I believe.
No, a little bit more than a minute's worth. Okay, and I believe this one is trying it again. Or maybe it isn't. Okay, no, this one fails immediately. I was trying it without the rocket to see how well the, uh, uh, how quickly it would go up. But the base kind of broke. So I retry it. Oh, now I'm getting sound. Well, first split second there, that's... Odd. Not a good sign. Anyway. So, this is able to get up, but a little bit of the base broke off there, clearly. And we're not going up all that fast. Which brought me back to the drawing board. Start doing experiments. Uh, I believe this one was to see if uh, having fewer control surfaces would make any difference on the weight that it or the speed that it was able to go up. Thinking that uh, a smaller one might be able to get up to orbital speeds, but uh, as you can see, clearly didn't. Then I decided to put, I'll try putting a small rocket on top. <clears throat> Which uh, made the thing, uh, or put the weight uh, higher up than the lift, causing it to tip over. Of course, I didn't quite fully realize that at the time. But I did some experiments and finally came to the conclusion of that a bit later on. Then we go back to trying the wing thing again. This one, yeah, a lot of them still pop off. Yeah, it's, that one just completely crumbled. I, I kind of thought, well, maybe if I put it up higher in the air, the wings would not break, and it might give it a chance to fly. But, uh, of course, the thing just goes right down to the ground. Breaks off a good chunk of the wings, rendering it completely unable to move. So I tried again. Even more wings. No rocket on top just to make sure that the wings spinning around can actually generate some lift. And... that's a no. Well, we do get this kind of nice slide off. Then I believe I started testing different uh, control surfaces, or different uh, wing types. Maybe the Delta Wings would work better. Nope. They don't do squat. And they continue to do squat in reverse. And here I had the idea of putting a uh, uh, I beams with uh, the large uh, control surfaces connected to them, but uh, it seems to spontaneously explode for some unknown reason. Which, while kind of cool, doesn't really help me too much. So again, normal wings, but pointed upward this time. And I couldn't even get the thing to ro to pretend to rotate. Back to the control surfaces, just to make sure I'm not going crazy and that everything works. <sighs> I 
and I apparently forgot to speed this one up. So we get to enjoy a minute of throw of this. Aha, I managed to save it. And then slowly drift off to the side, because we're at an angle in gravity pulling me down. Causes them to move through the air and count as acquiring lift, which pushes me back up. Which is kind of interesting. <sighs> Here, I was trying to get it to point back up again, but I failed epically. And uh, that was actually kind of cool. So here we are again with even more of the control surfaces. Trying to see if it'd go up faster. And I think it did actually go up a little bit faster. And works the same no matter what direction I rotate in. So here I tried putting them all on a upside down cone. Not for any real particular reason, was just curious to see what would happen. And we get a lot less lift out of it. Although I'm not sure if that's because of the weight of the cone or uh, the positioning of the uh, control surfaces. Or it could be a combination of the two. And we just kind of fly around like a UFO. Just trying to get the thing to point in one direction. And go in it. But uh, that didn't really work out too well. I think maybe I quit this one. I'm not sure, but I do st seem to be doing a good job keeping it out. Ah, never mind. There I land carefully and get the thing going back again. Just goofing around at this point, I believe. And it seemed to take a fairly decent impact there. And uh, the of uh, conards, I believe they're called, actually give it a nice surface on the bottom. Which is kind of cool. And the thing breaks. Okay, next up for the small control surfaces, which work really, really well. They launch the thing up going twice the speed as the other ones, which was interesting because they supposedly have a lot f less uh, uh, lift that they give. I'm not quite sure how uh, lift is actually calculated in this game, but these ones appear to be better than the standard cards, which is interesting because these ones are supposed to uh, supply 0.5 lift, I believe it was, whereas the conards are supposed to give 0.7. Not sure why that is, just seems to be how it's working out. And of course makes it a great glider. See, I believe I gave the bigger ones a try, but I put them up sideways. They have no way to actually bend in a direction that might help with the uh, roll. So they kind of just sit there and do nothing. Okay, next one was with the bigger ones, but as you can see, they just spontaneously explode again. Let's 
see. Back to the smaller ones, it looks like. Yes, those are the smaller ones. I believe I can't really tell, because I got this tiny little window that I'm watching this through. Even more of the small ones. Hoping it would make it go up faster. And it does, in fact, appear to be doing so. And now we're just kind of drifting. This game has some wacky hair physics. Here I was trying to put the rocket on top, continuing my experiments. Thing went up, but was kind of unstable, and quickly started wanting to fall over to one side. So I put one of the things on top, hoping that it would stabilize it, but I put it on upside down because I was just lazy and alt copied one of the ones from the bottom. And surprisingly enough, even though it's spinning in the in this opposite, well, in the direction that it should, and all the things are pointing the way they should, it completely nullifies uh, the entire rocket's uh, ability to go up with these things. So I rebuild it with them all pointing the correct way. And now it goes up without a problem. Let's see. Alright. So that one's been fast forwarded. That one is So is that one okay. So this one I wanted most of the weight in the back on the bottom for the thing and uh, the cap on top just kind of stabilize it with some uh, sepatrons attached to the top one so that uh, it would launch the thing off the rocket allowing it to uh, try to get up into orbit. And uh, it's kind of unstable as you can see. I was struggling to manually try to put it pointing straight up. Eventually gave up and did that, and to my surprise, the Septron and the uh, decoupler stayed on the main rocket. So I fixed that in the next design. Which goes up as well. Put a bit, a bit of weight on the bottom of it, because as I said, I want the weight to be underneath the rocket, and uh, that seems to help with the stability a bit. Also, making the added weight being more SAS units. All right. And then here, I wanted to see how I could get up with this. I added more control surfaces, and I believe more power generation, although I'm not entirely sure. And uh, I spent a good 45 minutes just flying this thing straight up. I believe we're currently watching it at 16x, which is quite fast. Which is uh, why we're flying up, even though we're only going like two point something meters per second. Now, around here, things started to get a bit on the wobbly side, and I had to manually correct its uh, positioning to make it point upward again. 
was very, very annoying. Eventually I said to hell with it and tried launching the rocket. Okay, and then I redesigned it, putting all the control services on top. This was about when I realized I needed to have the uh, center of mass to be underneath the lift of the rocket. And uh, it made it a whole lot more stable. Uh, this is also being shown at 16x. And I can't remember how high I went here. But it was completely stable the whole way. I just kind of grew impatient, I believe. So, I believe we've already hit the point where the previous one destabilized. And we just reached the point where I gave up with it, which means this one is doing a lot better. And it starts wobbling. So we take it out, see how high it got up. Alright then, and I believe that is the end of the episode. So, once again, I am KHM, and we'll see you guys in the next episode.